Hey guys and gals, since we are in Campanatus nuptial flight season, today I will be bringing you a Campanatus care guide. This beautiful gal is Campanatus sansibianus, one of the most common Campanatus species in the southwest of the U.S. And today I will show you how to get her and other Campanatus species best set up for founding a colony. And it all starts right here with this test tube. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Alan, but you can call me Al. I hope you enjoyed today's video. So now that we've captured our Campanatus Queen, let's set her up a test tube. I've just filled this half full of water, and I'm going to push a cotton ball down into the water. This will give her a place to drink and keep her habitat nice and humid. All queen ants, not just Campanatus, will need a human place for their brood. And it seems I've trapped an air pocket in the water portion of the test tube. This should still be okay. Now that we have her a fresh test tube set up, we'll just have to get her in there. Now there are a few different methods to do this. One of the best and most simple ways to do this is to line up the mouths of each test tube with no air gaps in between and just simply let her walk from one test tube to the other. But doing this could take a long time. So I'm just going to use the fast method and tip her into the new test tube. And now that we have her in the test tube, the best thing you can do for her is put her into a dark drawer or any dark place really and just let her sit there for the next month. This species usually takes anywhere from five to eight weeks to go from egg to worker. So it will be a little while before she gets her nanitics. You can also set these gals up in a small founding nest if you'd like. If you are using a small founding nest, I would recommend about three to four milliliters of water every other week. I do have some set up in nests that I will show you later in this video. But first, I would like to black out my queen. So I've made this thing. It's just black felt with tape on it, but it's perfectly suited for what she needs. And I just put it on her test tube and push it all the way up over her living area. And with a blackout shield like this, your queen will feel much more safe and secure. From this point, you could just put her away. But there's one more thing I like to do before I put my queen away for a month. Here, I have a syringe full of sugar syrup. And I'm just going to give her one single little drop placed right here on the side of the test tube. This is not a necessary step for a founding queen, but I like to do this to make sure that my founding queens will have enough energy to take care of their eggs, and it'll give them a little boost. Now, let's get a good shot of her drinking before I put her away. This queen is so beautiful, and this species is one of my favorite to catch because the orange gaster makes them very easy to spot. Let me know what Campanata species you guys are catching, or hoping to catch, this season. And now I'll just put this gorgeous gal away, and we'll check on her again in a few weeks. And now that I have the new ant room lighting set up, the flashing is gone. I'm sorry about that, guys. And now we'll do our three-week check-in on the queen I showed you, plus some other Sansibianus queens that I've caught. This queen has done very well. She has already reached the larva stage. In about another two or three weeks, she should have her first nanitics. Right now, it looks as if she has about six larvae. This is what I would consider an average batch of nanitics. Not too big and not too small. Some Campanatus queens will only start with two nanitics, and other Campanatus queens could have up to 15 nanitics. 
The number of mimetics she gets usually will depend on her subspecies and how comfortable she is in her habitat. Anywhere from 5 to 10 is usually pretty normal for sensibianas. And it looks like this queen has done even better than the last queen. This queen has a larger batch of brood, and it as well is all larva. From the looks of it, I count 8 to 12 larva in here. So this queen has done excellent. And it seems this queen has gotten a single thread of cotton splayed across her living area here. This is a danger to this queen. This single thread could get caught around her pedicle, which is the thin area between her thorax and her gastric. If she does get wrapped in this thread, and enough tension is placed on it, it could rip her right in half. So I will definitely have to do something about this situation. This is where a pair of thin tweezers become your best friend. Now let's put her away and get a look at my Sansibianus queens in nests. I did make a lot of these plaster nests, guys, so you'll probably be seeing them for a little while. This queen as well is looking excellent. She's already physogastric, meaning her gaster is larger than normal. And she also has a batch of larvae and some eggs mixed in there. So this gal seems to be quite happy with her little plaster nest. Hopefully she'll continue down the same path and we'll get quite a few nanitics out of her. I really wasn't expecting her to be doing better in a nest than she would be doing in a test tube. And now for our final Sansibianus queen. Also, I'm using this blue tape, guys, because it doesn't leave any adhesive marks and it's really good to use over this acrylic. These nests have been placed on my dark black shelf, so they don't get a whole lot of light in the first place, making it sufficient enough darkness for me to cover them with just this thin tape. And wow, this girl is our top brood producer. Not only is she slightly physogastric, but it looks like she has three different piles of brood here. She has a nice pile of larvae in her mandibles. And I believe the other two piles are a mix of larvae and eggs. This gal might wind up maxing out at the 15 nanitics I talked about. Or maybe even more, depending on how many larvae we have here. I think this gal might have to be our channel focus for Campanata Sansibianus. She looks like she's already ready to start an epic colony. I guess we'll just have to see how she does over the next few months. But wow, yeah, that's probably the most brood I have seen on any founding Sansibianus queen I have ever had. I'll just go ahead and get her put back into the dark and keep her nice and comfortable. And I have one more thing for you guys before we end this video. These two are some other Campanatas that I caught. I absolutely hounded the large Campanatus texandus nest I found in that stump. And because of it, we have two Campanatus texanus queens. These gals are a larger species than Sansibianus, so they don't usually start with as much brood. This gal has four or five larvae inside of her test tube. So she's doing good even by the smaller Sansibianus standards. And hopefully in the next few weeks, she will also have workers. And now for the other Texanus queen. And this is about the average brood pile for Campanatus Texanus. They usually only develop anywhere from 2 to 6 nanitics. So she's right on track. I hope you enjoyed the guide on Campanatus Sansibianus and 
Thank you all so much for watching.